morning, everyone. Uh, a very warm welcome to St. John's Parish Church here in Rathfryland for our group service of morning prayer on this Sunday, the 14th of June, 2020. I do hope and pray that you're well this morning and wherever you're tuning in from, be it Rathfryland or Valley Ward or indeed from further afield, we are so glad of your company and we trust that together we'll be blessed as we worship today. We've had a couple of special birthdays that I'm aware of in the parish in recent days. Um, our People's Church Warden here in St. John's, Richard McGuinness, uh, celebrated his 70th birthday just on Thursday past. Uh, and if you had driven down Richard's Road, uh, the road where the McGuinnesses live, you would have seen lots of portraits, pictures of Richard from uh, different stages of his life, um, all the way along. I actually thought there was an election campaign at one stage, but no, it turns out they just wanted the world to know that uh, he was celebrating and reached that milestone. So congratulations, we say to you, Richard. Um, and also a word of congratulations to our diocesan reader, to Jack Watson, um, who has celebrated his 88th birthday over the course of this weekend. Jack, we're so delighted for you also, and we pray for God's blessing to be upon you and indeed upon anyone else who's celebrating a birthday or, or a significant family moment at this time. May God bless you richly. You'll find all of the announcements for uh, the week ahead on our Facebook page. You can download them from there. Just to, to make a special mention that next Sunday is our Children's Day. And of course, ordinarily, we would have been looking forward to uh, our church services in respective buildings and, and our children participating from the front in those services. It's sad that that can't be the case this year. But nonetheless, we look forward to their contributions and our Sunday school teachers' contributions online for our service next Sunday. And I'm sure that you'll want to tune into that and to play your part in encouraging our children in that way. This morning, as I said, we're following an order for morning prayer. The different responses and words of the hymns that you'll need will appear on the screen, or you'll find a full order of service, service available to download on our Facebook page. Let's pause for just a short moment to prepare ourselves to worship, and then we'll use the words of greeting one to another. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Jesus said, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses. Remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age. Well, bearing in mind Jesus' commission to us to be his witnesses, we sing together our opening hymn, number 492, Ye Servants of God, your master proclaim.
beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his Spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Together we pray, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We give God praise in these responses. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. We're going to sing together another song of praise, and this one is entitled, O Church Arise.
Bible reading this morning is brought to us by Jessica Thomas from Valley Ward Church. So let's listen together now for God's Word read. This morning's Bible reading is from Matthew chapter 9, beginning at verse 35. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and illness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Jesus called his twelve disciples to him, and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and illness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter the town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are the Good Shepherd. Have compassion, we pray, on us, your people. May we know the power of your word to train and encourage us. And may we know your presence in your Holy Spirit to heal and to make us whole. We pray in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Well, the year 2020, this year, is a significant milestone for me in my own personal walk with the Lord Jesus, because this year marks 30 years since I first gave my yes to Christ and received Jesus as Saviour and Lord. I'm forever thankful for those people whom the Lord placed in the path of my life over many years to sow seeds of truth and love into my life. And I'm so grateful for those who took the time to explain to me what it means to be a Christian, a follower of Jesus. As I look back, I realize that some wise and trusting Christian leaders encouraged me to do something important as a young Christian. They encouraged me to share my newfound faith with others. So it wasn't too long until I found myself involved in the life of my local church as one of the team of Sunday school leaders and I had many opportunities um, to teach some of the other young people that weren't really that much younger than me. And a couple of years after that a member of our church called me up one day and he said to me that he was due to be leading a Crosslinks holiday camp later in the summer, but there was a problem. One of his fellow leaders had pulled out quite late on and there was an urgent need to replace them. Now, I was a bit slow on the uptake and innocently, I thought that he was phoning me up to ask if I had any bright ideas of someone else I could suggest that could join the team. And so I said, do you have anyone in mind? Well, I got some shock when his reply came back. Yes, he said, it's you. And so it transpired that I found myself still as a young and inexperienced Christian, as a junior leader on a week-long Christian camp, not far from here in Newcastle Primary School, just down the road. And as I look back on those early experiences and opportunities that I was given of sharing my faith, a few reflections come to mind and let me share them with you now. First of all, I want to say I'm thankful. Thankful for the trust that others placed in me. I have no doubt that 
there were other people around the life of the church who could have done a much better job than I was equipped or fit to do. I was, if you like, the untried option. I was the the risky one. And yet those mature Christian leaders chose to give me a chance and an opportunity to grow in my own faith development. And I'm thankful. That's the first thing. Secondly, I want to say that there were many times when I was glad to be part of a team. Whether that was the team of Sunday school leaders and teachers or the team of leaders at the Crosslinks holiday camp or or whatever else, it was true on so many levels. Because being in a team allowed me to watch and learn from some of the more experienced and wise leaders. It also gave me confidence to try out things that I might not have done by myself. And it reminded me of something important that God has not given me or you all of the gifts. He shares them amongst us. And that's a good thing. It keeps us humble and it reminds us that God calls us to work together for his greater glory. Thirdly, I don't mind telling you that there were plenty of times when I made a pig's ear of it. I have no doubt that as a teenage Christian, I was proud And I thought I was far better than I actually was. I have one particular memory of one of the first times I was asked to deliver a talk to children. Uh, It was part of a church service and the talk fell completely on its face. I didn't remember the theme of the talk, but I do recall this much that it was meant to be interactive. The children were, were meant to respond to some of the questions that I put out to them. And I just remember that they all sat there with their arms folded and not one of them uttered a single word. It wasn't exactly my finest hour. But you know, how often does the Lord use our moments of failure so that we can deepen our trust in him and learn to do it better the next time? Fourthly, my last reflection on those early opportunities for leadership uh, was that I loved it. Well, most of the time, at least, Uh, as is often the way, I found that I got so much more out of those opportunities than I ever was able to put into them. And those times deepened my desire to share the love and the grace of Christ with others. The Lord was beginning to build some foundations in my life. Now, why am I reminiscing with you about all these things? Well, as I look back, I think that those people who gave me those opportunities, they knew and they were following themselves the example of Jesus that we see in our Bible passage this morning from Matthew chapters 9 and 10. Our passage begins with Jesus and his disciples on the move. They're traveling amongst the the cities and the towns. We're told that There were two particular dimensions to Jesus' ministry. Firstly, it was a ministry of proclamation. And secondly, a ministry of healing. The two went together for Jesus, like sides of a coin. Jesus is teaching that the kingdom of God has come, has come in him coming. And it's a kingdom which brings life and wholeness to body, mind and soul. Here's one hymn writer's helpful description of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is mercy and grace. The captives are freed. The sinners find place. The outcasts are welcomed. God's banquet to share. And hope is awakened in place of despair. The kingdom of God is challenge and choice. Believe the good news. Repent and rejoice. His love for us sinners brought Christ to his cross, our crisis of judgment for gain or for loss. This is the kind of kingdom that Jesus ushers in. And in our passage, it's clear that Jesus is painfully aware of people's need for such a kingdom to come. People need the Lord. Jesus, looking at the crowds, sees that they are like lost sheep 
without a shepherd. And I've been so challenged by Jesus' response to that sense of lostness that he sees. He doesn't condemn the people. He doesn't patronize them. But rather, we're told, he has compassion upon them. In other words, something is moved to Jesus' very core by the need that he sees, the need that these people have for for leadership, for truth, for hope, for healing, for love, for freedom. He sees those needs and he is compassionate for the people. The truth is that we will never care much about mission unless we deeply care about other people. Someone once said to me what I think is a very profound statement, that people will never care how much you know until they know how much you care. People will never care how much you know until they know how much you care. You see, a love for the Lord will inevitably, invariably lead to a love for other people. I trust that within our church families, that we will be people who care enough that that when we see a need, a physical need, that we'll want to do what we can to help another. But I trust as well that when we encounter those who have a spiritual need, those who don't yet know the Lord, those who have hit some rocky ground in in their Christian journey, that that compassion we see in Jesus will be stirred up in us also and that we'll be ready to share our faith, to give a word of encouragement when God gives us the opportunity to do so. The harvest is plentiful, says Jesus, but the laborers are few. You may well have picked up the the story in the news over recent weeks and months about the plight of some of the large-scale fruit and vegetable growers, mainly across the water. Uh, And because of the coronavirus travel restrictions, many have struggled to recruit enough workers to pick and to gather in the crop this year. Now, the growers tell us that there is only a limited time for that work to be done. If the produce is left on on the tree or the plant or in the ground too long, then it will wither and it will die. And the chance to gather in the crop will be gone until next season. It's a sobering thought, isn't it? And it's a thought that Jesus then takes and applies in a spiritual sense. That the harvest is plentiful, that there are plenty of people who are lost, as it were, in Jesus' description here, who are in need of the Lord. There are plenty of people, but perhaps today it's still the case that the laborers are few. And with that thought in mind, there's a lovely transition here from Matthew chapter 9 into chapter 10. Our Bible reading overlapped the two chapters this morning, and I wonder, did you pick up on it? At the end of chapter 9, Jesus encourages his disciples to ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest field. He tells them to pray for more laborers to come. That's the prayer on the disciples' lips at the end of chapter 9. And then as chapter 10 opens in verse 1, what does Jesus do? He summons those same disciples and then he sends them out. He commissions them to go and to work in the harvest field. You see, it turns out that the disciples are the very answer to their own prayers. I wonder, has ever God done that in your life? Has that ever been your experience? Where perhaps God has laid some person or place or situation on your heart and and led you to, to pray earnestly in that way, only to discover that through your prayers, God leads you onwards into action. I love how Jesus works in this way, that you and I might just be the answer to our own prayers as the disciples discovered that they were. And friends, the truth of the matter is 
that you and I are the people whom God has chosen to place in our communities in this year 2020 for such a time as this. It is you and I who are called to be the labourers in the particular patch, the particular field of God's word, God's world where he has placed us and invited us to love and to serve him and to love and to serve his people. I love how we see in this passage that Jesus sent out the disciples. And remember, we're only part way through Matthew's gospel here. Yes, we know the great commission that would follow at the end of Matthew's gospel. Yes, we know about the wonderful things that would happen on the day of Pentecost when the church was born. But even now, when the disciples are still apprentices, when they're still in training, wet behind the ears, inexperienced, Jesus still says, there's a job for you to do. And no matter how inexperienced they may have felt, he sent them out. He sent them out to proclaim the kingdom. He sent them out knowing full well that they would get it wrong at times, that sometimes they would mix up their words, that that sometimes what they tried to say would come out all wobbly and mixed up. And yet Jesus still chooses to use them. He sends them out not on their own, but in teams. And he sends them to do his work. What a wonderful privilege it is that Jesus calls you and me to work in partnership with him in making the kingdom of God known and then allowing people to encounter that kingdom in a very real way as they hear the word of the Lord and they know the powerful touch of Jesus on their lives. Friends, I want to say to you this morning, I want to encourage you to to pray in a very specific way. I want you to pray that the Lord will give you an opportunity over the course of the next week or or the next couple of weeks. The Lord's timing is up to him, not to us. But pray that the Lord will give you an opportunity to do two things. An opportunity to show some practical compassion, some practical concern for someone whom you know or whom God brings into your path. And pray also that God will give you an opportunity to share something of your faith with someone else. It may be in a very simple way, a simple word uh, over the hedge or or in the shop or, or wherever else you happen to be. Pray that God will give you those two opportunities. Pray that God would send laborers into his harvest field. But don't be surprised if it turns out that it's you and me who are the very ones whom he calls. These disciples, their their names are listed here for us, the the 12 of them, and what a diverse bunch they were. Some of them were were loud and forthright, others more reserved and, and more analytical in nature. Jesus used them all. And whatever your gifts, whatever your skills, bring them to the team so that the Lord can use you and use your gifts for his greater glory and for the coming of his kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's respond by declaring our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, save the Queen and grant her government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, make clean our hearts within us and renew us by your Holy Spirit. The Collect of the First Sunday after Trinity. God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And together we pray. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom, defend us in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Some members of both our congregations are going to lead us now in our prayers for others. Loving Lord Jesus, your heart is for all people to come into your kingdom. As you sent out your first disciples into the mission field, we ask you to give us, your disciples, a renewed heart for mission. We pray for the power to speak of the faith that is in us and show it in our lives. Thank you for how online worship has enabled churches to proclaim the good news and reach out to many more people. We pray for all those who feel lost or helpless at this time. Give wisdom to those who have difficult decisions to make. May your heart of compassion be seen in the life of the church, so that many more may come to know you as the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you spoke in a spiritual sense of how the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. We give thanks for all those who have worked tirelessly throughout the season. Especially we thank you for the shop workers and public transport staff. Please keep them safe and strong in these days. We pray too for the hospitality and tourism sectors as they face a difficult kind of summer season ahead. Be with all who have lost their jobs or face an uncertain future. We continue to pray for our political leaders as they seek to balance so many needs and priorities at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you travelled through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. At your command, the sick were made well. Come to our aid now in the midst of the continuing pandemic that we may experience your tender love and your power to heal. We thank you that the numbers affected by coronavirus continue to decline. We pray for all those who still feel its effects. We pray especially today for all who have missed out on routine appointments and assessments and who may be anxious about the unknown. Give to each one your peace, we pray. May your blessing be upon every part of our health service that as they adjust to new ways of working in these days, 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you are the source of human dignity, and it is in your image that we are created. Pour out on us the spirit of love and compassion. Enable us to reverence each person, to reach out to anyone in need, to value and appreciate those who differ from us, to share the resources of our nation, to receive the gifts offered to us by people from other cultures. Grant that we may always promote the justice and acceptance that ensures lasting peace and racial harmony. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Now we're going to sing together our final hymn this morning. It's number 10 from the church hymnal. All my hope on God is founded. joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit and may the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. of all hope fill you with hope.